Hi guys. Okay, so it was announced and I anticipated a disaster. And what do you know? It's a disaster. I predicted this in my trader response a few weeks ago. And here I am commenting on these two non-scientists discussing science. These two guys with antiquated superstitions discussing 21st century science. Two guys who believe ants can talk and mules can fly discussing science. Can it get any worse? No, nah, not really. And it's really, it's eye-wateringly bad. It's cringeworthy bad. Well, I prophesized it. It came true. Want an example? Uh, this is something between two opposites. The huck, the truth is always in the middle. Yep. No, come on. Really, if you make a false claim and a true verifiable claim, the truth is not in the middle. Especially if you make the claim that you are following evidence. And that's the kind of nonsense we are presented with throughout the video. They, they could have done something really special for Islam by acknowledging reality. And instead, they missed the opportunity and ended up performing mental gymnastics and linguistic contortions. They rely on scholars, you know, like old scholars, but no two scholars agree on any one sentence in the Quran. And I'll give you some of the examples these two come up with. And they could have done something. They could have like said, okay, there is reality and you can't take what it says in the Quran word for word and compare it to science. Okay, there, there are different things happening here on, on different levels. In the one corner, we have the clickbait name of Zakia Naik, someone who is fascinating to Muslims and non-Muslims alike because of his hilarious entertainment value. Then you have the scientific claims made in the Quran because these are scientific. I mean, if you're looking at geology and biology, they are areas that you know go into the realm of science. Then you have the claims made by people in the Middle Ages who interpret the words in the Quran. And then in the other corner, you have the scientific explanation of a natural phenomenon the way that we understand it today. And then finally, you have those who try and bring all that together as a scientific miracle. Well, good luck. If you're looking for examples for the term oxymoron, the expression scientific miracle is going to be right up there. So why go there? Why not stick to the facts? I mean, come on, can this work? No, the probability tends towards zero because Islam is built on faith and science is built on facts, the opposites. And I'm not aware of anything that is verifiably true in the Quran. So where is the basis for a comparison with today's understanding of nature? Can there even be an honest comparison? No, because, I mean, look at it. Sky is not heaven and is not our universe. No, because saying every living thing is made from water is not saying that everything contains water. So instead of honesty and integrity, these two people are presenting a reinterpretation of words, old and old-fashioned words. Now, normally, I take what they claim, compare that to what it says, and then look at what we have available to us today. Can I do the same here? Not really. Because, okay, here we have four topics covered in the video, all from the field of cosmology, which is Big Bang, expansion, consistency, duration, and some other things. Oh. And quite honestly, I don't really know what to do with this mess. These two are all over the show, jumping from science to Nike to Quran to interpretations by all sorts of people. Linguistically, it's very difficult. Yeah. It's so, very difficult. So but it, just, it's possible. This, this kind of thing should be just kind of thrown in the, the bin. <sighs> Again, it has to be subject to, to, to due diligence and bath, and it requires bath on this. Okay. I can't really quote what they say. Compare that to the, the Quran proper and, and the words individually and then compare this to reality and then show what is most likely the case. Because they don't understand what science is, how it works and what it does. So their claims are ludicrous. Now, how the vase breaks in terms of the theory of gravity or theories of gravity, that's, that's, that's changed. You know, so there was first Newtonian understanding and then an Einsteinian understanding, for example, right? So theories are not as strong as observations. But they don't understand what an observation is and that a theory is a resulting description. They are 
painfully unaware of what the concept of gravity is and that Newtonian gravity here on Earth was not replaced by the newer model by Einstein. So they get creative and go to their fantasy world and here anything goes. If it, if it says after, then this can be before, during, after, just like Adnan Rashid did with Professor P.Z. Myers in Ireland with embryology. I don't know if you remember this. So that if the Quran is wrong about something, it is automatically right. And within this swamp of random words and expressions, I've located what I consider to be the two central sentences here. Number one, if something is true, then the sentence in the Quran may be, what well, may, may be, interpreted accordingly. And number two, don't follow what science says, but you can follow scientific evidence if it matches what the Quran says within limits. <laughs> and that's all these two managed to come up with, taking almost half an hour to do so. The Quran trumps reality. That's all they manage. That and a lot of using words like honest, truth, academic honesty or intellectual honesty, while dishing out complete and utter nonsense. Because, and that is, there's a really simple reason, because this is intended to confuse critics and provide these apologists telling non-Muslims sort of stories as, as a form of dawah, some way out of being challenged in the form of talking shit. That's all it is. Paragraph 1, the Quran is always right and accurate. Paragraph 2, if this should not be the case, invoke paragraph 1. <laughs> That's what it boils down to. So in the video, we get the intro and the superstitious greetings to their God, and then the claim that they are propagandists on both sides. By the way, and this is quite good, okay, because they say that there are miracle seekers and there are um, those who are trying to propagate errors in the Quran. Errors of, of science. So if I say that not every living thing is made from water, then this is propaganda. <laughs> it's not true. It's not something that is built on facts. No, it is propaganda. They, they don't understand that over time, what we observe changes according to our observation abilities. People 5,000 years ago did not have the ability to actually go and look at the sun and how it was moving inside the, well, the galaxy and the galaxy inside of the universe. So these observation um, capabilities increase with the abilities to see things and therefore these observations change. Point being, everything in science can be criticized and science is not incorrigible in the sense that it can change. Anything in science can be challenged and can change. This is true. Absolutely. They are 100% right here. You can challenge anything and it can possibly change. I mean, if Sibur were to come up with any, any sort of different um, explanation for evolution, then this would change. But unfortunately, he can't. So then after two and a half minutes, then we get to a this, Maurice Bouquois. Um, there was a person named Maurice Bouquois who wrote a book which was he was a French uh, Egyptologist yep. and he went to yep. Egypt and these things and he found Ramses II's uh, body Tomb. and yeah and all these things. I'm not sure if you've read his book, but it's, mm. uh, what his book was called is the Bible, Quran and Science. <laughs> Maurice, who? It's Mo Dr. Maurice Bouquet. He's the French Egyptologist and he found Ramses II's body. Okay, he, he, the only thing that is correct here that he's French. He's not an Egyptologist, he's a doctor, gastroenterologist, by the way, at the court of, in, in, in Saudi, in, in Riyadh. And he did not find the body of Ramses II because he was good buddies with the king in Saudi. He was allowed to look at the body and that's it. And he wrote a book. Yeah, but it's not Bible, Quran and scientific method. And Bukwas, <laughs> no, it's Bukayism. And this is advocated by Zakir Naik, sure, but he was recruited by Zindani, sponsored by Osama Bin Laden, just like good old Dr. Moore. So I, I don't understand what they're doing. If you, if you look at what he says, he's not taking the Quran and analyzing it. They don't really say what Bukay said, but they look at what Zakir Naik said about Bukay, what he said about what the Quran says. Does anyone see the problem here? And then five minutes we're talking about the Big Bang and how we see a modern scientific theory comparing with the Quran. Well, it doesn't. 
because 2130 does not say anything about a Big Bang. There's nothing there. This is just an old fairy tale. I mean, this is like 6,000 years old, this concept. And I've shown, I don't want to do all this again. I've shown this so many times, how all these old stories have found their way into the Bible and the Quran. It doesn't matter whether it's the splitting of the universe and earth and whether it's the flood. All these things are ancient old stories and they just reappear in the Quran. We get the famous the sentence I showed in the beginning with the truth is in the middle. And then if something is true, then the sentences in the Quran may be, may be interpreted accordingly. So well, if there is something which is an undeniable scientific truth or reality or observation, mm -hmm and it's unquestionable and it's proven and it's accepted and agreed upon then the ayah in question may be, may be interpreted accordingly. It and this is where it comes from. And then they, they show every living thing is made from water and suddenly it turns out to be every living thing. It has water in it. No, that's not what the Quran says. So why pretend that it does and why claim that it does? It does not. It says every living thing is made from water. That's, I don't understand why they, they, they can't stick to the truth. That's what it says. How can they say every living thing has water in it? Okay. At least they are saying we cannot say the Quran is referencing the Big Bang. Brilliant. Because it doesn't. Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't reveal the Quran to be a book of scientific theory. Yeah. A book that be, can be applied to scientific theory and then rejected. Mm. It's revealed as a book to guide us or guide us, the Muslims, to be a guidance for all of mankind to the Akhirah. This is the, the, the central sentence here. It is not a book of scientific theories, okay, but a book to guide us. Well, it doesn't. Because if you take belief, prayer, fasting, hajj, and zakat, you know, the five pillars, it doesn't have the shahada and it doesn't show you how or tell you how to pray, how many times or whatever to pray. It doesn't tell you the rules about fasting, about hajj. It doesn't tell you that you need to throw and do and make and run and whatever. All these, these old um, rituals that they took over from the pagans. Or it doesn't even tell you how to pay and how much to pay in, in zakat. So... It doesn't even give you guidance. So it's not a book of scientific theories, but it can be interpreted in that way if the theory turns out to be absolute truth. Oh boy. Anyway, we can't say this is what Allah meant because you're not allowed to interpret what Allah says. You need to leave that to the scholars and wish, well, I mean, I've looked at this really. I've, I've looked at what the different scholars say about different portions and different sentences in the Quran. And it's very easy to do. I mean, we are in the 21st century and they don't agree. So there's it. Then they go into the expanding universe, which is not there. And I mean, he reads the sentence, it certainly, it is we who are steadily expanding it. Now, we know today that this was inserted after they found out, I mean, look, look at what Hubble did, 1929, he then published his works that the universe is expanding. And then suddenly the sentence crept up there, who are steadily expanding it. And then when was it 20 years ago, we found out that it's not steadily expanding, and most copies were changed and the steadily was taken out when we found out that it was actually accelerating. But in some versions, the steadily is still in there, which would make the Quran wrong. Then they go, and this is now a brilliant example. So it doesn't say, وَالسَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بَنَا نَحْبِ عَيْدٍ وَإِنَّ الْمُسَعُونَ Yeah. So the, the, the idafa or the adam idafa here, they don't have uh, dunya because we know that سَمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا is per Surat Al-Mulk. Yeah. Is where you find any stars, right? Yeah. As sama so you can translate, how do you translate that? It's possibly universe or? Because the thing is, yeah, I mean, I don't want to do that myself, but the yeah. point is, I'm saying, um, it's not saying so it's not saying this worldly. This, but the sky, as you this can. Sky, this thing above us. Above us directly. Being, it, it, Again, there's difference of opinion as the word aid. What does aid mean here? Mm -hmm. Some of the Mufassirun have mentioned, such as Qurtubi, he quotes that there are a new, a number of different interpretations <laughs> given. <laughs> yeah, in fact, the, the strongest opinion is that we are able. all able. Mm -hmm. We are all powerful. Right. So it's not necessarily that we are expanding. Okay. Yeah. And is there any contradiction between those? Could could someone theoretically believe in both of those things? Able and... Absolutely. Ab it could correlate to what's going on according to the theory, yeah. but we can't be too sure about that and we shouldn't again. use that to propagate. Absolutely. Islam. Absolutely not. Because again, there are different tafsir, different opinions given by the Mufassirun on this and even just from the Arabic language, we can say that this doesn't, you cannot restrict it to this particular meaning. And as if you restricted the Quran to something. Because this is completely wrong and it is 
like totally scientifically insignificant because all it does, it, it goes from the word expansive because something is expansive, like the universe, changing it into expanding. This is too typical bouquetism. Because this is not true, the scholars are now interpreting this as it is we who are all able. This is how far they go. And it is we who are steadily creating seven heavens. I don't know where they get the seven heavens from. Well, we know seven heavens are the, the seven uh, visible planets at the time. But if you look at the Quran and you look at the, the exegesis, you look at the tafsir, then you will see anything from being all able, being some magical monster who can create a vast universe, um, all the way to creating seven heavens. So this is what scholars are saying about this one sentence, and they don't agree with it. Anyway, so they could now restrict the Quran to something, to a particular meaning, but the scholars are giving different opinions, so they can't. So you can't go today and say, this is what it says in the Quran. And this is the problem in looking at the Quran and making a series what they are doing, because all they can do is say, well, in the Quran it says X, but we have 15 scholars and 15 different opinions on what this could mean. So it's a bit useless. So they could have done something else. They could have said, well, it doesn't represent anything scientific. It's not really readable as a, you know, as a scientific paper. So don't do it like that. Always add a pinch of salt and go and put some spiritual meaning on it. And you're better off doing it that way. Then we go into heavens were created after earth and earth was created after heavens. So we have 229, 4111, 4112 and so on. So then we have earth was created after the heavens. And now they go and analyze this and they come up with different scholars who are saying different things about this. That it could mean that thumma here in Arabic, thumma, uh, we roughly translate it to mean as More, uh, after. after. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean it happened, this action before it happened after, or this action after happened before. Mm -hmm. It could mean that when you speak, it's as if you're given tartib, you're simply reorganizing how you present a structure, how you present a So sentence. the point is, this would suggest the opposite. It would suggest that the Samat was created first and the Heaven was created. No. The, the it, was created. It, it may, but we'll cover it in the future episode. The reality is, is that this isn't a contradiction yeah. at all, at all. Yeah. And uh, firstly, we believe that it could never be a contradiction in the Quran. Yeah. It comes from one source, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reality is that even some of the Mufassirun of old have mentioned that it could mean that after the creation of the Heavens and the Earth, whenever mm -hmm. a particular opinion they were off, and now, after all this, this contortion and mental acrobatics, we come up with this after. Because was Earth actually created after the heavens? Well, no, because this is not a contradiction. No, not, not at all. Because there can be no contradiction. After all, it comes from the same source, which is Allah. So in the end, the word after does not mean after, but it can mean during or even before, if you want it like that. Because the most important thing is earth and heaven, th those two were created, and that's what matters. So who cares about the details? And this is what is so laughable, laughable because in science, everything is incredibly accurate. Everybody goes and checks it and tries to falsify it. So you cannot in any way compare the Quran to anything scientific. So don't try it. <laughs> but they're doing it anyway. Then they go to days and periods because then you have very lie. No, sorry. Verily, a day with your God is equal by your reckoning to a thousand years and so on. So you have a thousand years and then a day which spans 50,000 years. So they say, well, these are different days and you can't compare that. And there's no contradiction here because day is not actually a day, but it's a period. But there's six of them. <laughs> so why, why do you need the six periods why can't you say it took a long time you know it's just be reasonable but six periods no they're not days it says days but they're not days they're periods but six of them and then they go to smoke and when it was work they said to the earth come both so earth and, and heavens or whatever that may be they can talk and they can talk to each other well and we come willingly no, but is is this somehow linked to the big bang and they said there is no way to clarify this. I mean, how, how can earth and heaven, when it was smoke, I mean, smoke is a byproduct of combustion. So how, how can you get smoke at the beginning of, a, of anything? You can't. 
You first need a product which burns and then you can get smoke. So this word dukan, which is smoke in, in Arabic, they can't get around it. So they say there is no way to clarify this. And then they say it is academic dishonesty to say earth was created before the seven heavens. The ones who want to promote Islam and pro, pro, yani promote Islam as being absolutely in line with scientific evidence, which it doesn't have to be. Mm. It doesn't have to be, as we've explained, but I yeah. will say that these are the things that make it in line with the science and then they'll quote this Tafsir. The ones who want to say that Islam is in contradiction with the scientific evidence, they'll be selective on the they'll Tafsir, be selective that, they with the tafsir that they choose. So this guy who we saw here talking about uh, the earth being created before the heaven, he's he's falling into that. Absolutely. He completely ignored what the major Tafsir have said, such as Tafsir al-Qurtabi, Ahkam al-Quran, and it's, right. quite, it's quite shocking to be honest with you. No. So the point we're trying to make here, academic guys, dishonesty. Well, could we say here, if one of you is honest as possible, I think the argument we can make from a Dawah perspective, because yeah. once again, we have to not only think about how we can understand this mess out of the situation ourselves, but how we can package it for the for people of Dawah. If you take science as a good yardstick for truth, then the Quran is the most closely correlated ancient religion to the scientific discourse. Really, that's what that's what they say in the video, <laughs> because there are different interpretations and none are absolute. So it's academic dishonesty, sir. <laughs> Come on. So as a summary for Dawah, and this is now after 19 minutes, like, if you take science as a good yardstick for truth, then the Quran is the most closely correlated ancient religion to the scientific discourse. Come on, there is no scientific discourse. <sighs> okay. I'm not going to go into that. It's, I mean, and then they say, well, if you compare it with a biblical narrative, the Quran is much better. Because, no, it's not. It's, it's the same nonsense. So you can give the Quran a scientific tint if you don't say that this is so. And don't follow what science says, but you can follow the scientific evidence if it is really true and has been proven to be absolutely true. And there's no chance that it can change again. Oh, boy. Who created the heavens and the earth and all that is between them in six days? And this what is between them is not not between them. There is nothing in between. Them. Linguistically, it's very difficult. Yeah, it's so, very difficult. So this but it, just, it's this, possible. This, this kind of thing should be just kind of thrown in the, the bin. Again, it has to be subject to, to, to due diligence and bath and it requires bath on this. And okay. We are as academically honest as possible. And we are talking based on evidence within limitations okay and that's the entire video that's all that they managed to come up with they, they talk about cosmology biology geology and none of this is true none of this is substantiated in any way all they have done is just shown how you can take words in the quran and change them and look at what people said a thousand years ago about these and show that this is completely nonsensical. And that is the gist of the matter. I wonder if somebody is going to come up with something that is verifiably true in the Quran. Until then, have fun. And if you like what I do, give me a thumbs up. And if not, then give me a thumbs down. Do me a favor and tell me why. Thanks. See you next time. Bye.